Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I, I thought I'd just jump on here and prophesy with some people. I got something on my heart today. Basically, it is two days until The Wild Ones is released. It is launched and I feel like there is just so many themes just on my heart. I mean, there's so many topics in the book, so many prophetic parallels to right now and why God is wanting this message out there. And uh, as I'm saying this, there's there's wild horses running past me on my left on, on the other side of this river. But you know something? This is a time for the wild horses to arise. This is a time. This is a time for the wild ones to emerge. Why, why is it time for the wild ones to emerge? I have people ask me all the time, Nate, you know, this is great that you're writing this book. It's great that you've had this, this topic, this prophetic thing. But why, after all my process, after all my painful years of being in exile from the main narrative of, of the church, Western church. Um, why after all these years is God suddenly choosing me now to come out of hiding? Why, why after all my years of feeling alienated and rejected and not, not part of the local church or not feeling understood, why is God suddenly using this moment now to call the remnant forward? I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna give you guys a few Things. I'm going to pray for some people. Is that all right? Good to see you guys. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, where you're from. Let me know where you're from. Northern Alaska. Oh my gosh, I always wanted to go to Alaska. That'd be amazing. Janet, good to see you. Praying for you, by the way. Praying for you. Charles, my friend. Love you, man. Karen, good to see you. Carrie. So this is, I want to paint, maybe I've got so many. I've got so many things in my spirit over this. Okay, but this is just one, okay? Have you ever heard of, you know what, actually, I'll give you two. <laughs> you guys know about Nehemiah, right? Nehemiah in the Bible. You go to Nehemiah 1, I think it's verse 3 and 4. And he, he makes this, um, there's this amazing, the scripture basically says that, you know, they'd been in exile, right? The people have been, this is two situations. Hey, good to see you, Josh. They'd been in exile. And... Um, it basically just says that when he saw the state of the broken down, like the, the, the broken down temple and everything, he, he, he came into grief over it. That is a core component. as a core conviction of the remnant. It's a core conviction of the remnant. Because we see what's broken down. And for so long, it's felt like, We've been seeing it and we've been seeing what needs to be restored, just like Nehemiah, but we've not had the influence or ability to go and impact those areas that need to be rebuilt. It's almost like, it's almost like, you know, um, Christianity is seeing the remnant almost as a, a fault finding people or a mission when that's not even the purpose of, of the remnant at all. It's like they're seeing them as, hey, you're a threat to what I'm building so therefore, I have to attack you. It's like if you go to Nehemiah 4 when they're rebuilding and Sanballat, and every, I'm not Sanballat, but the, the, the guys that came against Nehemiah were like, it was all about insecurity. They wanted, to, they wanted to stop him because it was a threat to their mediocrity. But what they don't realize is that if the remnant don't arise, we don't step into the new. Okay, second story. And this one is just something that's just been in my heart a lot lately is a story of, um, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. <sighs> I've got about three or four going on in my spirit. I'm just like, wow, I'm just, just trying to get, okay. <sighs> oh my gosh. I'm just feeling the, the, just like all of these different things just hit me all at once just now. Have you ever heard of the signet ring? being mentioned in the Bible. Who's, who's heard of the signet ring being mentioned in the Bible? Who can think of somebody in the Bible that was told that they were going to be a signet ring for God? Who's that person? It was Zerubbabel. Okay. If you know the story of Zerubbabel, if I'm saying his name right, he was, he was raised he was Jewish, but he was raised in a Babylonian empire because of being exiled, because of being in captivity. Okay, Towards the end of that captivity, God spoke to Haggai and said that he would be, that I've chosen Zerubbabel 
and he'll be my signet ring. What is a signet ring? It's God giving his authority, his honor. It's his very authorization to move in the earth the way that God would. It's like he's saying, I'm giving you everything. It's a new covenant paradigm of the finished work of the cross that Jesus gave unto us when he left. He said, tag, you're it. It was in the Old Testament, yet it was a prophetic parallel. It's a prophetic paradigm of what was to come, where God would give his very authority, his very authority to those that carry his heart. Zerubbabel means pressed out of Babel, pressed out of Babel. Okay. Who is Zerubbabel? I've written a word on this many years ago. Zerubbabel is one of the remnant. The interesting thing about Zerubbabel is very much like Nehemiah. He had that same quality. He had that same value. I must rebuild what is broken. I must rebuild what is broken. And what did he do? He rebuilt the temple, the cornerstone. He rebuilt it on the ruins. And then he took back, if you read, there's many books of the Bible that, that share this story of coming out of captivity. It's a very, very powerful. They bring everything back and nothing was, not even one piece of silver or gold was missing or unaccounted for when they were, were taken back. The interesting thing is this, is I want to point you to, we are the Zerubbabel remnant because we've been pressed in Babel. We've been pressed in this season. We've not fit the current mode. We've not understood why, why have we not had a, why has it felt like we've not been able to be a part of the main story? Why has it felt like that we've been on the outside, on the fringe of Christianity for so long, looking like the freaks of nature? Why? It's because God has been preserving us for a purpose that we don't even know until this moment. We've been preserved for a moment that God would say, now you're my signet ring. Now you are my signet ring because my people have been in exile and I need you to lead them out. And I need you to rebuild what is broken. I need you to lead them out. I need you to rebuild what is broken. That is the purpose of the remnant. That is the purpose of the wild ones. Okay? Because it takes grit. It takes it takes the heart of a worshipper to do that. You can't do that as a hireling of religion. You can't do that if you're if you if you got a handshake with the world and you're you know if if you you're trying to if you're trying to keep all these networks and all these different things happy, you're not going to do it. Okay, you're not going to do it. You are not going to both appease God and man in this moment. That is why God has ripped you out. I want to ask you guys right now, who has felt like they've literally been torn and ripped out, rejected out of the main storyline of Christian, uh, out of the main storyline of, of church Christianity? It's because God has been protecting you and preserving you for this moment so that you could be used as a Zerubbabel given the signet ring of God and being used to go and to restore the church, bring the exile um, out. It's like, that's what you're going to do. Your story, you being, you coming out of hiding and saying, okay, God, I've been through so much because it's not that easy, right? We, we go through these seasons, we're like, man, like, why, why is it felt like I'm constantly warred out and persecuted by my own brothers and sisters. They don't understand. They don't understand the wineskin that you're of. They don't understand the purpose because you have a purpose that is, that is already beginning before the hour that it is revealing itself. They don't know you're going to be the one that unlocks the door to lead the church out of exile. They don't know that you're going to be the one that shows the church the new topics and themes of heaven. They don't know all that. All it looks like to them is that you're a threat. All it looks like to them is that you are speaking nonsense. All it looks like to them is that you are serving your own kingdom. But you're not. You're serving his. So this is my encouragement today. 
it's time. Wow, isn't it funny? Two words have so much anointing on them. It's time, it's time. I feel this in my spirit. Can I tell you what I've been wrestling with? I've written this book. I'm so glad I've written this book, okay? I wrote this book in six weeks because it flooded out of my spirit. It flooded out of my spirit. I'm so grateful for the book. Christy and I have been in a, such an incredible detour in the last two years. Um, I'm grateful for it. Don't think that I'm saying that it's a negative thing, it's not. But we've felt this extreme detour even away from career Christianity. It's nothing to me. It is nothing to me. And I'm not trying to, to I'm not trying to say that it's wrong if people are in that. I'm just saying for me, God is tightening up the boots of the remnant. What are we really alive for? What makes us tick? It's the heartbeat of heaven. God is branding us right now. He's branding us for a purpose we don't even realize. We don't even realize. Man, he's bringing us, even us as the reformational remnant, he's bringing us back to, um, back to simplicity. Here I am surrounded by all these trees and a river over there, and I'm just like... There is something about the heart of God in this hour that he's leading us away from the path that we've known into greater places of just absolute abandon to him. And we're going to see him move. So what's my word to you? It's time. That's why you're alive. Can you see the prophetic parallels of so many stories in scripture coming around yet again for the body of Christ in this hour in the church where we're seeing the church laid to waste in so many ways. We're seeing the val we're seeing the gospel, man. It's just treaded on. We're seeing, we're seeing culture become so accepted in the church. We're seeing all these different look, there is just demonic narratives and themes that are just being accepted in so many ways. And it almost just like it's it's trying to lay waste the kingdom. And here we are right now in our families, in our communities, in our churches, in our cities. We can't hide anymore. I know. I know you've been through the rejection. I know you've been through the hurt. I know you've been through the season of dropping your gift. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to drop everything because people reject it. We're created to feel validated by the people around us. We're created for that affirmation. But in this hour, it needs to come from the Father because God's telling you to pick up what you have dropped. He's telling you, pick up what you have dropped. He's telling you, pick up what you left behind because it is time, Remnant, to step out of hiding. It is time for you to move on from that place where you've been stuck in the wilderness. This is my public call out to those who have been stuck in the wilderness. This is my public call out to those who have lost themselves in the season of exile. This is my public call out to you, okay? You don't need to stay there anymore. This is my public call out to you. Now your purpose begins. Maybe you still don't understand it, but let this be just the beginning of your, of your fire beginning to be rekindled again that there is something new that God's doing in you. I'm going to pray for you right now. Whew, Holy Spirit, I'll tell you something. Man, I've got no agenda in this. I'm just tired of seeing people on the sidelines, not knowing the hour that they're in. I'm tired of seeing And feeling like they have nothing man, when we've got everything even in a time where the world looks like it's going crazy sirens going <laughs> we have more than we know I love that Charles advance take the land I want to ask you guys something as I'm praying what has God told you what is he saying to you about this time what is he saying to the remnant write it in the thread I want to pray for you right now I sent out an email just before saying, this is a public call out. This is a public call out. 
Maybe you know somebody who's been broken down in this season. Maybe you know someone who's lost themselves in the wilderness. Maybe you know somebody who's just absolutely just, they're, they're being so hurt. They're being so rejected by the church. They're being so just battling insecurity. Maybe you know somebody. I want, today, can I ask you a favor? Can you go and encourage them? Can you go and tell them, hey, I believe it's time that God wants you to leave that place that you've been in. Can you go and tell them, hey, I think it's time. I think it's time that God wants you to move from that place. He doesn't want you to stay there forever. Don't have to mention me. Don't have to mention my book. I don't care. I want you to go and just pray for them, lay hands on someone. The Lazaruses need to leave the cave. They still have a purpose left. They still have purpose left. Maybe you're watching this and you're like, that's me, Nate. You still have purpose left. In, ca- in, in, in fact, I need to reiterate this. It is now time. You have not even seen your purpose. You have not even seen your purpose. You've been looking for it in the confines of the four walls when God has always said that your calling is greater than that place. I break off the mentalities and the lies that you believed about your calling that you've been looking for fathers and people that would validate you when the Father has already validated you. So let me pray right now. Come out of hiding. In the name of Jesus, I call you forth. I call you out of hurt. I call you out of wounding. I call you out of pain. I call you out of fatherlessness fatherlessness and being feeling like an orphan. I call you out of insecurity and fear and disablement and unworthiness and feeling like you have nothing. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release the fire of God just to come and burn and break away every tie, every chain, and everything that's been keeping you at it there, every lie, every hurt, every every wounding, every trauma. Let it be broken now, everything severed, every demonic assignment that's been just at you, every tormenting voice that's been uh, taunting you every single day. Right now, I shut down every single assignment and I command you come forward in the name of Jesus to the front lines because this is your hour remnant. This is your hour wild ones. This is your hour mighty emerging voices to come and to make yourselves known in this time of history because God is not done with you yet. You ain't seen nothing. Love you all. Have an amazing day. Yes, this is my warm. This is my warm up for my book release tomorrow. Uh, is it tomorrow? Two days. Two days. Um, my book is released, and I have a special announcement, my friend. Who's heard of Craig Cooney? Daily Prophetic. If you're on Instagram, you know who he is. Mostly, he is joining me to uh, launch my book, and we're just going to get on and pray for people. Really, he's awesome. If you love the Irish accent. The anointed Irish accent. It's uh, the the Commonwealth brothers coming together, and uh, we're just going to pray for some people, and uh, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. So, I will be letting you guys know when I'm doing that in a few days, and it's going to be awesome, and even giving away some books as well. So, which would be really fun. So, love you all. Have an amazing day. Please share this with somebody that you know needs to be encouraged and told, hey, it's time to come out. You've been stuck in that place. And what I really sensed, even through the video, there's people that have been stuck in grief and loss in this past two years. Um, you've lost people. You've lo- and it, and it's, it's caused you to drop your calling because you've just lo- you've felt lost. You felt like, I can't live without them. I feel like God's really just even just hitting at grief today. He wants you to know that there's a new beginning for you. I know that's difficult to even understand or even to hear, but he has a new beginning for you. We've not seen anything yet people. You wait and see what God's going to do. Love you all. Have an amazing day. Bye.